need more. Whatever you can, again, I, maybe you don't have more, I don't know, but whatever you can share, I think that's the most important thing here because, again, it's really all about, it's great that we understand history and these stories and abilities and all that, but how does it apply to us? How do we do it? Let me try to explain. First of all, the royal palace, the royal temple, what you were talking about happened in the royal temple. What's the difference between the royal palace and the royal temple? You have a palace and you have a temple. It's two different buildings. What are the uses of each? The palace was the residence for the pharaoh, the king, and his people. The temple was a place of worship and learning spirituality, their way. The information they brought with them from different planets, and they continue this in the temple. You couldn't just go into the temple. The temple chose certain people, and usually children. They take them in as young people, and they go through this process. They call it initiation, baraka, whatever. They're going into this process. Why children? Because you want to start at a young age. You can't bring, usually, you want to bring a small baby and teach him from the beginning before he's being contaminated with other nonsense. Now, every child of Pharaoh, including Pharaoh, and of course, before he was Pharaoh, had to go through the process of Baraka. So every child that is born to a Pharaoh, boy or girl, they would go to the temple, and the chief priest at the time would go and take them through the process. Once they finish with the process, they go back to the royal palace, and whoever is there, is succeeding the pharaoh when he dies. Now, you're, you're basically saying that the temple is choosing individuals on what basis? It's like TLS, frequency, energy, vibrational sequences, and so on. And they choose certain children that they decide are worthy of being in the royal temple. And, and what kind of things do they teach them? Like, what does that process look like? Now I'm a year old. I come in, okay? Whatever, however that process happens. So you start as soon as the baby has an understanding, and most of them have an understanding at a very early age because they're usually very high IQ people, highly intelligent. So as soon as they can understand, they start meditation. They teach him the history of creation, the history of the universe, history of the world. They are talking to you about different planets, different entities, spirituality, transparency, to bring you closer to the divine. The higher you get, you get into a better position in the palace and in the temple. The target again is to reach and touch God. This is the way that they see it. But it's a very long process. It's a very tedious process. And some people fail and they take them out. When you say long, if I'm one when it starts, how old will I be when it ends? I can tell you I started at the age of five and I left by the age of 40. Not because I wanted to, it was because Exodus happened and I was a Hebrew child that happened to end up in the temple, which was very unusual. They did not take Jewish children or Hebrew children. And the story again, it's in the Pyramid Code, so I'll continue. I basically had to leave the country. I joined Moses and his followers, and there was another child that was under me, eventually, that eventually became my wife, and we both left Egypt going into Israel. So, around 40, whatever it was, would it have ended at that point, or it only ended because of the issue? For me, it ended because I had to leave. Otherwise, I would continue being in the temple and getting to higher and higher places because I chose to live this life. I was happy there. One second, how old were the pharaohs? Oh, they could be anywhere from 50 to 500, depending on the pharaoh. Depending on the location, there were more than one pharaoh. At a time? Yes. I didn't know that. Yeah. Can you elaborate? This is why when you go to Egypt, you have Cairo. You have the pyramids there, with the pharaohs buried there. You go to Alexandria, there's more there. I didn't know that, I've never been to Egypt. It's going according to areas, do you understand? But they all came from the same planet. Whoever controlled this area of Egypt came from the same planet. Now, if you're going to go to Peru, Mexico, it was different people, same time, more or less. They did the same thing over there and built the pyramids there. And they, and worshipped over there. But eventually, they all got contaminated and became basically dust. The entities from another planet. Again, when it comes to the Barakah process, what types of things were done over those 30, 40 years when you were there? What do you remember that was done? I asked that, so for individuals who want to start going in that direction in this life right now without the royal palace and the royal temple and all that, what actions can be taken? So what actions were taken back then that we can apply to our lives today? So as I said, T 
teaching of history of different issues, meditation, out-of-body experience eventually, uh, levitation. Uh, but you're talking many years. This is not a two-month course. You understand what I'm saying? So, and they would teach you, for example, how to shut down your body completely, no heartbeat for a very long time, as if you are dead, but you're not dead. You're doing an out-of-body experience for a long duration. So a person who is an expert in this field can go under and dive, and he's fine for a few hours, and nothing will happen to him. No brain damage. Nothing. They know how to shut down the body. They can, they can control the heart. They can control the mind, the brain. They can control the kidneys, so no damage will happen to the body. Are you able to do any of those things today? Some. Like? Not because I remember what happened then. It's because my training here for the last 13 years. Like what? I can do some. I don't want to mention exactly what. What have you experienced? I can do some. What's the difference? It's not going to give you anything. I cannot do the water thing, for example. I can do other things. So you don't know how to shut down the heartbeat? No. Are you able to slow it down? Yes. To what degree? My best record was 20 beats per hour. Per hour? Yes. One beat per every three minutes? Yes. How do you go about doing something like that? Like, wh what does the process look like to, to do that? It's a form of meditation. How long does it take to get to that place? If I need to do it on an emergency basis, it will take me five seconds. If I, if I want to do just to practice, it's going to take me, because it's not an emergency situation. Emergency situation, I mean, for example, if I have to pretend to be dead. So they check your heartbeat. There's no heartbeat. Some people can do it for three hours. One beat every three hours. If it's not an emergency situation, let's say it's an exercise, half an hour. And do you just start breathing? Do you have to lay down? Me personally, I have to lay down. Some people can do it standing. I'm not that good. A heartbeat stops while they're standing? Yeah. What's holding the body up? The soul. Same person who levitates. How does he levitate? What's holding the body down from that? Gravity will take him down. Why when you do, when a person does levitation, how come he doesn't fall? You tell me. Because you're being trained, or your soul is being trained, or the soul is really training you how to gravitate your body to any height you want without, and gravity will not affect you. What's the process to do something like that? It's like the power of meditation. Like, you know, people can meditate and move objects. Same thing. It's just in a different form. But it's something somebody needs to teach you. You're not born, oh, let me levitate. It doesn't work like that. How long did it take you to learn? Well, every subject is different, but, uh, to be good at it, three years, three and a half years. Something daily? Almost. Now, just a personal question. Do you think that I would ever have the privilege of learning something like that? I hope so. It's fun in a way. It's dangerous, but it's fun at the same time. Yeah, but I understand that, like, to teach somebody that needs to be done for a purpose. My job is more of speaking. I don't think I have to do anything like that. So do you believe that at any point, and again, whatever the answer is, it is, but do you believe that I would ever have that opportunity? I believe so. I believe you will, for only one reason. There is one event that will happen in the future that you and me spoke about before. I believe you will be part of it. And for you to be part of it, they're going to have to teach you some tricks. If that's what you want to call it. You're going to need to know certain knowledge. I know you're doing meditation. And I know you're working on other things. Independently. Which is all fine. But you will need a little bit more than that. Like guidance help from them. Yes. If this event will happen. And if you'll be a part of it. Then they have to show you certain things. Okay. We don't have to get into that now. Anything else you can share when it comes to the Baraka process? Anything, if you can give a call to actions of, if I wanted to do it right now, you know, next 50 years, how do I live my life on a day-to-day? -day? What can I do? You said meditation. What types of things can I do? What would you recommend or encourage me to do in order to move into that path of my life? You cannot do anything unless you're going to have a master that will teach you everything I spoke about. You cannot do it on your own. Nobody can do it on their own. Maybe to get to the levels that we're talking about, but at least in the direction, what can we do? Meditation. Taking care of your soul. Taking care of your body. We spoke about that before. That's very important. 
No alcohol. No drugs, obviously. Every time you touch it, your soul is going down. What are certain ways that people can clean, not just the body, we know that, that's a physical thing, but how does one clean their soul? You've, you've done certain things to me, you've done certain things with me. The common man, how can the common person out there right now clean their soul? Physical exercise like yoga. Yoga is a very big part of it. Meditation is number one in living a clean life. I'm not talking physical, clean life meaning being transparent, no deceit, no lies, using what you have financially to help others in need to whatever degree you can bring yourself to do it. If it's feeding the poor, clothes, helping the sick, whatever it is, don't just go to work, make money, build the palace, buy a Lamborghini. It's all fine if you can afford it, but make sure you share your blessings and we are all being blessed. We're just not aware of it. And if you're not taking your blessings to share, the blessing will become a curse. If you don't take your blessings and share them, it becomes a curse. Correct. Interesting. Very simple rule. Very smart rule if you think about it. And I see people, I know a lot of rich people, but they're cheap as hell. And you see their private life is garbage. You did something to me, we don't have to speak about the details here, but it's the equivalent of that movie, The Green Mile, where the, the black man basically helps individuals release certain things from them by taking the sickness on himself and then releasing it. Yes. That was done to me on a way of, I asked for help, and I would call it like a soul cleaning. That level of intensity, because I felt better right away. How can people experience that without having somebody like you in their private life? First of all, what you're describing is totally different from the movie. How can you even compare? I don't understand why you are even comparing it. It's confusing people. Whoever saw the movie, it's totally different. No, it's not. What I did was totally spiritual. He did more of a physical thing. First of all, you were the one after you did it that said, watch the Green Mile and you all understand what I did. Yeah, but knowing that you know me and you know the process, now if you, I'm saying you're talking to your viewers now, it's confusing them. No, I'm not saying bugs were coming out of your mouth. Oh, okay. Uh, no, I'm not saying bugs were coming out of his mouth. It was a spiritual thing, but it was the same idea. You're absorbing and then you're letting go for a period of time you were sick. Okay, so what is your question now? So I'm saying, thank God I have you in my life to do that. But most people don't. How can they experience that level of intense release on their own? In addition to living a clean life, sharing their blessings, all those things. They have to find some type of guru, if you want to call it that. And there are people who can do that. There's a guy in London who does it. Can you give us a name? I think so. I gotta get permission. There's certain people who can scan you and clean you. Some of them, you know. I don't want to mention names here. We'll talk about it privately later. You want to share it with your viewers? It's up to you. Look, in order for me to clean your physical body, it's... I'm doing it with spiritual tools. There are people who could do it with the physical tools only, or physical equipment. Different equipment. I have my equipment, which you know what it is. And some people can use ultrasounds, but specific ultrasounds to do certain things. You know who I'm talking about, but we're not going to mention her name. There is a guru who can, again, it's all going to sound weird. They're all weirdos, and, but it's fun. It's, uh, they have the ability to do it, and they do it for people. The only thing I don't like is that everybody is doing it for a fee because that's their livelihood. But fine, I can understand it. But some people do it for very reasonable fees, and some people take advantage of their powers, and they take a lot of money. But fine, at the end of the day, if you get the results and you can afford it, why not? Hopefully one day these techniques can come to the masses for a very reasonable price or basically for free. There's no reason why it cannot be for free. Medicine should be free. You know this man in London? Yes. He has like a, a public place? Yeah, you could call him, make an appointment, and go see him, but you have to fly to London. Okay, if you can give me that and you get permission, I want to share. You want to share this person? Unless you tell me not to otherwise. I got to think about it. Okay. I have to get back to you on that. Again, let's 
bring our attention back to the pyramid code for the purpose of this conversation. So we're speaking about technology right now. They obviously had technology back then. You spoke about electromagnetic pulsation, electromagnetic laser pulsation, and how it was used for positive purposes back then. I know you spoke about it in the document, but can you shed a little bit more light on, on you know, how they really used it on a day to day? Well, first of all, those technologies were part of the teachings in the temple. How? They will show you the source of the energy, which came from a different planet. They will teach you what good you can make with it. Good in the temple was either to heal someone who was sick or revive the dead, provided you get permission from a higher source to do that. How does that work? Remember the staffs we were talking about? The staffs have EMP in them. One EMP and one EMLP. One is used for healing, and the other is used for reviving the dead. And in what situation are you even allowed to revive the dead? That sounds like an interference. That's why I said you have to get permission from the top, which happens rarely. Usually, if they're willing to give permission to revive anybody, it would be babies only, or very young children. They will never do it for adults, because otherwise, Pharaoh will revive himself. Who's they? You're saying if they give you permission, who's they? Every person in life has a higher being above him. For example, if I was in the temple, the high priest was my boss, let's say. But he also has a boss, the pharaoh. Now the pharaoh needs a boss. So it's a combination of entities that it's basically checks and balances to make sure it doesn't get out of hand. Because if you're going to give the power to pharaoh to revive himself, he will never die. He will never reincarnate. He can beat the system. And the idea is to reincarnate in order to come back, to do the tikkun that we spoke about, and move on with your reincarnation. Or if you get to a point that you did what you're supposed to do, and there is no more tikkun, you move to higher places within the spiritual world. It's very complicated to understand as humans over here. But part of the learning was EMP and EMLP. Are those the only two technologies that you know of back then? Yes, look, this... This technology made pyramids levitate and fly. Everything was based on that. Today, it's a hidden secret. Very few evil people have it, unfortunately, and they can do a lot of damage with it. There's something I want to bring up because it's, it's very relevant to what we're talking about here. Just the other day, I had a conversation with my friend. You know of him, Robert Edward Grant. The guy's a genius in like everything. I, I don't know how a person can be that smart, but he knows a lot about a lot. And he was just in Egypt. He invited me. I couldn't make it. But he invited me to this trip in Egypt. And he's like, you got to come. And unfortunately, I didn't go. But he came back with this incredible story that he shared with me the other day. And you and I spoke about it. Now I want to speak about it on camera because I think this is really interesting. He calls me and he's like, Jason, a few months ago, you called me. You told me the pyramids are spaceships. I thought you were crazy. But you were right. And this is how I know you were right. And he started telling me about all these different things of, you know, how it's connected to the Zodiac and how the Zodiac is being used with the energy of the pyramids to travel as like gateways and stargates and portals from one pyramid to the next and so on and so forth. And again, I need to re-listen to our conversation. I even asked him if he would do an interview on that because there was a lot of validating information there for him for a lot of the things that you bring up in that document. But in short, what he said was, in certain parts of the pyramid on the, the north, south, uh, east, and west walls, there are a lot of different you know, drawings and, and engravings and whatnot. And there are specific portions where zodiacs are actually drawn there in, in specific ways. Again, I may be butchering the explanation with the way that he explained it, but basically the moral of the story was, he's like, listen, because of this equation, this mathematical formula, and X, Y, and Z, they're using the energy of the Zodiac through the pyramid to connect to the energy of the Zodiac to travel from point A to point B and even teleport. Does that sound plausible to you? Absolutely. But you mentioned that the pyramids are actually coming up and levitating and moving. And the point that he got up to is it's not that they're moving, but they're using one pyramid as a portal or a gateway to basically teleport to another one in a completely different part of the universe. So I told him, I said, listen, I don't understand how the whole flying part works because I'm sure what you're saying is 100% accurate. But here's what the pyramid code says. Here's what Ray says. Find a way that you can make it make sense. And if you can, let me know. So I just want to clarify. 
is number one, the first thing that he's saying makes sense to you? And number two, are you saying in addition to that, they can also literally fly? That's exactly what it is. He doesn't get the EMP and EMLP source of energy that makes it fly. There's no fuel. There's no fossil fuels. There's no magnetic energy. It's basically EMP. He asked for a conversation with you. I know you're going to say no, and I'm going to convince you, and eventually I'll get my way. But until I get my way, he's going to be watching this interview. Are there any recommendations or any anything that you would give him in terms of guidance? And whatever you say, he's a genius and he'll times it by 100. Is there any guidance you would say, look over here, do this to understand the part that he didn't get to yet? Because the first part, the way he explained it, is like scientific. The guy's explaining to you how you're moving from one place to another scientifically. Well, I'm going to surprise you. I already did. He just doesn't know it was me. What do you mean? I was with him in Egypt. Just now? Yes. As you? No. Can you tell me more? No, I happened to be there. I was in the neighborhood, so I popped in, and I was there, and I was... I was there. I gave him the signs he needs. He got to what he got because he saw certain signs in the walls. I was just there to help without him noticing what I'm doing. It was just a, a bypasser. More or less, yeah. I don't know what to say. I was part of his group without being part of his group. Okay, so I'm going to ask you something. Is there something you can say right now that he would understand? Nobody else will understand that he will understand, that will validate the fact that what you're saying is true. Anything he did, I wasn't there, so I don't know. Anything he did, anything he was wearing, I don't know. He saw signs on the walls that regular people don't see, and that's what brought him into awareness of the information you just gave me, which is correct. But he didn't get into the whole picture because he doesn't understand the connection to EMP and EMLP. He has to learn it deeper. He's a smart guy. Eventually, he'll grab it. What does that mean? What do you mean, what does it mean? He got certain information, and he got to a good place. He just doesn't know that I was there. I could have been the guide. I could have been the security guard. I could have been anything. He doesn't know who I am. I just used certain powers to lead him to certain walls, so he could see certain things, which he did. And if you ask him about it, he will tell you, yes, now I understand. He saw certain lights, you understand. He saw, he saw zodiacs. He saw language that he eventually was able to understand that if you're going to go, you're not going to know anything. What do you think his role is in this whole thing? I don't know. I was sent on the job. I did my job. The organization sent you to do that? Yes. So he must play a role? Everybody plays a role. But that's a big role. Well, we're not here to decide what's big, what's small. We're all humans. We all play a role to a certain degree. Do you believe that there will ever come a time where he's approached directly? I don't know. I have no clue. Just to put it out there, if there's anybody, I would, I would go to him for it. The guy's a genius. I'm sure they know that. How long were you there for? Not important. Okay, there was, there was a part in the document, in the Pyramid Code, that speaks about this like underground portion of the pyramid, this... this whatever, this cavity underground, that they were storing certain technologies and whatnot. And it says very explicitly that you wrote in the document, it's still there and it still has yet to be uncovered. Do you believe that TLS will end up leading any form of an expedition to uncover them? And now while we're at it, do you think Robert will be a part of something like that? I don't know. I know he didn't get to the basement. He thinks he was in the basement, but he wasn't. As a matter of fact, one of the tunnels there, if he was, I don't know if he paid attention or not, but to the right of him, it was blocked by cinder blocks. It was sealed by the Egyptians. That's one of the directions that you could get into the basement. But unless somebody from the organization will take him specifically and show him the ins and outs, Nobody's getting to the basement, not even the Egyptians. Why don't you do that? Because this was not my mission. My mission was to do certain things. I went, I did, I left. That's what I do. But why don't they do that? Why don't they lead? I don't ask questions. I have a job. I go, I do it, I get out. Do you believe the time will come where they uncover that? Yes, of course. Do you have any form of a timeline? 
No. Five years, a hundred years. I have no clue, but I believe all this information we're talking about, everything we're speaking about, ETs, planets, this information will come out to the masses. But something needs to happen first in this world, but this information will come out. That's crazy. <laughs> let's keep going. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. Different topic completely. Unless there's something I'm not asking that I should ask. Is there anything I should ask? Regarding Robert? No, I'm not going to answer you. Anything that you would answer that I didn't ask? No, I just give you a tip. You can tell him that he already met me. He just doesn't know. Would he recognize you if he meets you again? No. Can you consider a phone call? No. You know you're going to end up saying yes. No, unless I'll be sent on a mission to do it. Otherwise, I'm not doing it. I can find a way to make that happen. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. <laughs> Let's keep going. Garden of Eden. Garden of Eden is spoken about in the document. It's spoken about as somewhere in Iraq, or I don't remember. And it specifically says it's the source of wind. In the last conversation we had, you spoke about the Garden of Eden. And you gave some information, but it was, it was a really popular topic with a lot of questions and not enough answers. How do you know, like, what is this? How do you know where it is? How do you know that it's the source of wind? What's the significance of it being the source? Why wind? Why not fire? What do you mean, how do I know? I was there. You were in the Garden of Eden? Yes, if I get permission, I can take you there tomorrow. It's a physical place. Can you ask? I'll ask. We'll see what happens. But don't count on it. I can ask many things. I don't always get my way. But, no, just so you understand. It's a physical place. It's the source of spirituality of this planet. Earth. Not the universe. When you say the source of spirituality, what do you mean? Make believe there's a house. And spirituality is living in the house. That's the house. Garden of Eden as opposed to the Dome of the Rock that we spoke about. This is the center of spirituality and energy of the universe. Let's not go there for a second. Why wind? Why the source of wind? I don't know why, but I guess wind is connected to spirituality. And that's the source where it comes from. Again, make believe it's a factory of wind. It started there. So every wind anywhere in our planet Earth, the source is there. Once it's out, it can navigate in different directions according to the climate, the weather of the day, and so on. But the source came from there. When you were there, what did you see? What did you hear? What did you experience? I don't want to tell you too much. I can tell you there is sound. In our understanding, it's music. But it's music you've never heard before. I wish I could record it. You can make a lot of money selling it. Everybody would buy it. But in my understanding, us, human, for us, it's music, but it's a divine sound that I cannot explain, but I can tell you that it makes you feel unbelievably relaxed and happy, and at the same time, it would bring you into tears of happiness. M music, like without words? No, no words. Is it higher pitched, lower pitched? It, it fluctuates. You might hear a voice that you might translate it into a female voice, but it's not really that, but it's similar. It's a combination. It's not one sound. It's a combination of sounds that creates this magnificent creation that I, I don't know how to explain. You're saying it's a physical place. Are there, is there water? Is there, is there wood? Is there fire? What is there? It's part of planet Earth. Is there like an entrance? Yes. What does the entrance look like? Forest. Forest. Trees, not forest. Okay. Okay, and it's, there's a facade. You remember I spoke to you about the facade that protects the craft, the spaceships? There's another facade. That means if you're going to go with the plane over it, and you look down, you're not going to see what I'm describing. You understand? So there is a facade, but there's a way of getting in there. How do you get in? Somebody took me. I didn't go on my own. For what purpose? It was a learning experience for me. Is there any relevance to us knowing this in terms of the Garden of Eden? It's spoken about in the Bible. It says the Garden of Eden is where the four rivers meet. There's a lot of confusion over there. Correct. My question is, how does knowing about this apply to our lives today? Most of what you read in the Bible is correct. Not all of the information is there. 
some of the rivers, two rivers are on top. Two rivers are under the ground that you don't see unless, again, you got to go under some... It's like a natural tunnel that was built. So there is the city, and under the city, if you want to call it like that. Are there people who live there? Used to. Not anymore. Why? Today, it's more connected to missions of certain groups who can have the ability, the challenge, and the permission to go into the place. Let's go off topic again for a second. Not really off topic. It's all connected, but... In this, it's like a spiritual, physical place, whatever you want to call this. I have yet to understand like the complexity of it. Maybe one day, I hope, please ask. I would, I would love to experience something like that. If there's a good reason to, I, <laughs> I would love to experience something like that. But my question is on the power of thought. The power of thought is spoken about in the Pyramid Code. As a matter of fact, back to Robert for a second, I kept like intervening as he was speaking because I'm like, wait, 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 before you continue, I want to say something because you know I don't know what you're about to say and I want to see if it matches. That way you don't think I'm repeating what you're saying in a different way. And it happened multiple times and he's like, yes, that's exactly what I was just going to say. That's exactly what I was meaning by X, Y, or Z. So one of the things was about the power of thought and what he was saying was with the walls and the constellations on the walls and the zodiac and all that, he said in his own words, that what he came to understand is the fact that using the power of thought, they're connecting to the pyramid, which is allowing to do teleportation, travel, X, Y, or Z, whatever it is. My question for you is, from your perspective now, what do you even mean? Robert will explain it in a very mathematical way and scientific way. What do you mean in your own words as the power of thought, and how does that apply to our lives today? First of all, you have to understand, Robert is not just Robert. Robert was reincarnated. He has certain memories in his subconscious that he is not aware of. He's getting there sometimes, but he is not always there. He hasn't got to that point yet. So, for example, when he was on this trip, his last trip to Egypt, part of the teaching, let's say, that was supposed to be given to him, without him understanding that he's being taught something, is that he personally has the power of thought strong enough to move certain stones in the wall that will open doors for him so maybe this will come later. He only understood some of it. He didn't grab the whole thing. He mentioned that it was actually crazy. I hope I say this the right way. That each block in the pyramid is a different size. And the size, at least on the walls that he was looking at, the size of the stones are not random. They're specific sizes that are coordinates in the universe of where you want to go to. Is that true? Ask it again. I'm not sure I understand what you're saying. From my understanding, again, it was a long conversation over an hour and, and it was hard for me to grasp everything. But from my understanding of what he was saying is the stones on these walls of what was written on them, when you connect to them, the size of them, of each stone is different. They're not all the same size. And the size is not random. They didn't just come and put random sizes. Each size somehow, and he explained it perfectly, I don't remember exactly how, but each size somehow coordinates or correlates to specific coordinates. It's a map of where you want to go to in the universe. That's correct. That's part of what I gave him, but he got it. Yes, he still has a long way to go. And again, if he was sitting in front of you right now, what are, what are one, two, or three things you would say, look into X, Y, or Z to activate the next step? He was blessed by the divine, and the more you give, the more you get. That's a rule in life. As I said before, we're all being blessed. But if you don't use the blessing in the right way, every blessing can become a curse. He's a good man, highly intelligent. He is highly spiritual, but is not maximizing his spirituality potential. He can do much more than the average guy. Physically, materialistically, he did it all. As I said, we are 10% spiritual today. We need to go back to 90% spirituality, and most of us are not even close, so this will help him in the future. But why are we talking about Robert today? I don't understand. This was not supposed to be the discussion, am I wrong? Well, the discussion is supposed to be about the Pyramid Code, and obviously he's connected one way or another. We are all connected to the Pyramid Code. He just... He, he is at a different degree, okay? Different level. Let's keep going. In the document, you speak about codes. I've asked you this before. I'm going to ask you again to give some more direct answers. I know you can't share the code. I know you want to share the code, and the organization's not letting you. 
And you already mentioned what the code would reveal in terms of how it would change our way of understanding certain things without giving too many details, but you gave the big picture. Can you give some more juice or meat to understand what you're talking about? First of all, what you're talking about is regarding the book Rays of Light. Also the pyramid code. Yes, but what you described just now, which is knowledge of creation, knowledge of everything has a code. The Bible has a code, which I, um, I don't know the code. Everything has a code. But I can tell you that comparing the pyramid code to the rays of light, it's like you can't compare. It's totally different. Higher? Much higher. The pyramid code? No, rays of light. So the codes that were built into rays of light can give you the secrets of creation, history of creation, power of creation, history, real history, not the one they're teaching you in school, real history of the universe, not only planet Earth. It will teach you about frequency, vibrational energy, dimensions, level of dimensions, fields of dimensions. There's so many things that you, we can sit here for thousands of years and discuss it. So this is like, once you have the code, you can basically teach yourself everything I just mentioned, plus much more. So you have the power of water, the power of prayer, the power of the mind, the power of thought. There's so many things you could use them and use them for the benefit of humanity. This will come. I know what will happen. But the question is when and at what cost. Right now, we're in a very bad place. Are the codes that are like encrypted, if you want to call it, within the pyramid code, is it throughout the whole document or only a piece? No, throughout the document. Is there a certain portion to pay attention to? Any examples you can give us? No, it's not going to help you because if you don't have the code, you're not going to get it. You should pay attention to everything and try to understand what I wrote there regarding the energy and the technology. It will help you survive what's coming, maybe soon, because I believe it's connected somehow. When you say coming soon, what are you talking about? I have a feeling chaos is about to come down. And it's not going to be a pretty sight. Understanding what I wrote, some of the information there can help you deal with what's coming. You'll have a better understanding of where it's coming from. If you had to have one like hope of what each reader that reads this document would take out or receive from the pyramid code, what do you hope each reader would take out of it? Awareness and spirituality to a higher level, because we all need help on this plane. And I hope it will bring them to understand that many are in a very low place right now, and they should rise up to a better place. And if they will do it, tomorrow their children, wives, family, neighbors will do it, and we can bring this world to do it all together. This will make the shift that you are basically looking for. The shift you're looking for is awareness. That's how you're going to get it. With people coming to spirituality, Awareness will be a given. Transparency will be a given. It will come automatically, and evil is going to disappear. So awareness and spirituality is your goal through the document? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's everything that I do. And some people call me crazy. Some people say it's not good enough. I think that that's my job. I think that's my base, and that's why I'm here. So that's why I do it, and that's why I ask you to do these interviews also, so we can further elaborate on certain things that are happening to spread that awareness. So... First of all, I want to say thank you for your time. I do have a few other questions. They're not also related to the document, but they are related to modern day. And I don't always have time to sit down with you and you don't always have time to sit down with me. So while we're here, do you mind if I ask you a few on topic and off topic questions? Go ahead. You speak a lot about remembrances and past lives and reincarnations and things like that. Why is it that some people remember while other people don't? I don't know if I can give you a straight answer because I really don't know. To me, it happened at a very, you know, I wasn't born with it. It happened to me at a certain age, and it just happened, plus teachings that came. I had teachings first, and then something happened on one of my missions, and suddenly that day I started remembering things just by looking people in the eyes, and I started, oh, I remember this guy, or I remember that guy. I was able to see into somebody's soul and make the connection from previous reincarnations. Are you able to change, or is one able to change their next reincarnation through their current one? And if so, how is it possible? Well, the answer generally is no. 
However, few people can, and I'm one of them. I did play a game I wasn't supposed to play, and I succeeded. It was against everybody's wishes, but I did it anyway. Don't ask me why. It's a long story. But no, it's not possible in most cases. But a few people can. I tried, and I succeeded. Can you speak more about what you did? I just put certain motions into play, into movement that will affect my next reincarnation because a soul can control the next reincarnation. But I did it as a human, as a body. That's where you understand. I didn't get to just be a soul. You understand? You have to get somewhere and then make a decision. I made a decision now. And you don't believe that there's a price to pay for that? There is. I think I already paid some of it here. I had certain goals that I wanted to achieve. I didn't want to listen to my superiors, and I did it anyway. I got what I wanted, at a cost. I'm not going to say it was without a cost. There was a price to pay, but I'm fine with it. If you can go back, would you change? No. You would do it again? Yes. That means you didn't learn a lesson? No. It means I don't agree with my superiors on everything. And there are certain things I wanted done to myself and to others. Good things and bad things, I have to say. But I prefer to be in this position today, that I know what I will be next time. What my name will be. I even chose my name. You're not supposed to. Only your parents do. So I know my name. I know my situation. I know my being. I know my body. And more or less, I know the length of my life. The length? Yeah. Can you at least tell me the length? No, but it will be my last reincarnation. Are you sure? If you chose it, maybe you messed something up. No. I'm sure. What I know, I know. What I don't know, I don't know. Just from a friend to a friend, you probably did something really stupid. And whatever price you think you paid, again, I don't know what you did. I don't care what you did. But it's probably much bigger than you think. I don't agree with you on that. You can't play God and get away with it. It doesn't work that way. I didn't play God. I just used certain information that was given to me and certain powers that were given to me, and I used it without permission. That's correct. And that's wrong. But I had a very good reason to do what I did. I didn't do it because I wanted to have fun. I did it because I wanted to achieve certain things, especially with other people, and I believe I'm right in what I'm doing. Okay. I hope so. I wish you the best. I hope to know you in the next one, too. I'm sure we will. I have one last question for you, big picture, again, regarding extraterrestrial life. Obviously, there's a lot of talks about extraterrestrial life and more and more coming to, you know, being made public in terms of evidence. Do you have any timeline in terms of when, I know contact has been made for a very long time already, but when will it be as public as it was back then? The latest will be 2,192, the date we spoke about. This would be the latest. I hope it will be before. You see, today, we have no clue of what's going on, we humans. Every entity out of this planet Earth, on every planet, every soul, let's call them, not an entity, because they are souls. They know everything. They have full transparency among themselves and among others. We will achieve the same knowledge that they have the day true peace will come into this world. And it can only happen through awareness. The only difference between you and me, you believe that only awareness can do it. I say you need to expedite matters through other means, that you perceive them as violence. I'm not a violent person, but I just believe that if you need to deal with force in order to achieve a goal, such as awareness and transparency and get rid of evil, I think force needs to be used. That's the only issue me and you have. Otherwise, we agree on everything. I don't think you can achieve what you want to achieve just by those wonderful, beautiful ways of love and peace and light. It will not get there. And if it will, it's probably going to take forever. I'm not a patient man. I just want to get things faster. And I hope TLS will listen to me eventually. Right now, they listen to you. Before we end this, do you have anything else you want to share? Anything that you didn't speak about? I don't know the next time where we'll be able to sit down like this. So do you have anything that you'd like to share that you haven't yet? I just want to give certain tips or warnings to the general public. Expect chaos in 2024. However, expect much better results in probably toward the middle of 25, the end of 25. If you're invested in the market, be careful. Be careful from the banks. 
Be careful from your government, any government. I'm not talking only the United States. I want to believe that evil will be defeated soon. I'm working very hard myself on it. Although I'm not getting my way all the time. But I can tell you TLS is working nonstop on changing the status quo and also working on preventing as much as possible from chaos entering our lives. Let's pray that groups like TLS and others, because there are others, will succeed eventually in bringing the world to a better place because me personally, I feel that we're in a very bad place right now. It worries me. I feel bad for my friends, my family, for everybody I know because I know people are going to get hurt. Just be careful. Be aware. Clean up your life. Clean up your soul because I think better days will come eventually. I believe 25 will be a nice start into 26, but there will be a price to pay. Price to pay, I mean, there will be a human cost to this, unfortunately. The question is how much, how high, I don't know. Time will tell us. That's it, and have a happy new year. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. You're welcome.